What then about Santa Claus? <laughs> Santa Claus, Ikhwan, <clears throat> also known as Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas actually, Ikhwan, was, was Turkish. That he was uh, uh, a, 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 an individual who was born in uh, an area in Turkey <clears throat> approximately in the year 270 Christian, Christian era. And he was involved, Ikhwan, in, he was one of those who were involved and was a participant in the Council of Nicaea. If anybody, if any of you have done any uh, looking into the Bible and, and what, how the Bible was changed and so on, you will know that in the year 325 Christian era, there was a council or a big shura meeting, if you like, uh, of uh, in and among Christendom where they brought individuals, all of the high priests within Christendom together. The Roman Empire, uh, the Roman Emperor, Emperor Constantine, he was sick of the fighting that had taken place after the death, or after the ascent of Isa ibn Maryam. After the ascent of Isa ibn Maryam. What happened, Ikhwan, in and among Christendom, was that Christians split. After Isa ibn Maryam uh, had ascended, Christians split into three groups. There was a group who said that the, that who or the one who was with us was God himself. There was a second group who said that the one who was with us was the very son of God. And there was a third group who said, in fact, the one who was with us was a prophet of God. And they were known as the Yaqubiya. They were known as the Yaqubiya. The first two groups came together and fought against and killed the majority of the Yaqubiya, those who held and maintained that it was not the Son of God, it was not God himself, but that it was a prophet of God. And so what happened very quickly after the ascent of Isa ibn Maryam, those who held that he was only a messenger, they were killed other than a few of them. But some of those beliefs, uh, yani the belief that he was God himself, or the belief that he was a son of God or a messenger of God, caused difference in and among Christendom, and you had individuals who did not accept that he was a son of God. And those individuals, Ikhwan, would be crucified, and they would be burnt at the stake. Uh, and because of the fighting and the killing that took place in and among Christendom, uh, the Roman Empire, Emperor at that time decided that he is going to bring Christians together, high priests and people of importance among Christian them together. He was going to unite them under one roof. And then they were going to codify the Bible. That is, we're going to remove from the Bible that which is creating the problems. That which causes you to have the opinions that you have and that which causes you to have your position. We're going to remove it from the Bible and we're going to unite upon one book that is not the cause of differing and fighting among you. And so they removed the number of the books of the Bible, the Maccabees, they removed many of the books, the Apocryphas, many of the books were removed from the Bible, those books that they considered incongruent with the message of the Bible. And so when those books were removed, uh, the rest of Christendom were united upon this one book that as far as they were concerned had one message. And that occurred and took place in the year 325 Christian era. One of, uh, one of the main and the most active uh, uh, and the most superior of the people of knowledge who were present at that time uh, was this Nicholas from Turkey. And he went on to, became, to become uh, a saint uh, uh, and, yeah, and he was given this, uh, this title of Saint Nicholas. But that was very late. In fact, it wasn't, it wasn't until the 19th century that he was considered a saint. In any case, Saint Nicholas uh, was the one, Ikhwan, who was considered uh, the uh, uh, or considered the the origin of Santa Claus. It should be known that Santa Claus and the term was something that was incorporated again into the whole affair of the celebration of Christmas uh, uh, yeah, and he by, or the name Santa Claus being given to him was actually, there was a Dutch individual uh, and he was actually a Dutch uh, yeah, and he, a writer in a magazine and cartoonist and he used to draw cartoons uh, of 
uh, 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 Saint Nicholas, and he would call him Santa Claus, which has du which is Dutch in origin. Uh, in at, th at that time, up until the 18th century, he was considered, or he was when he was drawn, he wasn't actually considered jolly at all. Yani, he would be. They would depict him as a short man bent over with a long white beard. Short man who used to wear a large black cloak. There was no red cloak, Juan, as we see, and this nice rosy cheeked man. Rather, it was an old man who was bent over, and he was known to be quite harsh. In fact, he was known to discipline children. And not only known to discipline children, but he was known to beat the living daylights out of children. He was known for that. And that is why... When you hear in 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 the uh, you know in, in in the famous song, you better not pout, you better not cry. Uh, I'm telling you why. <laughs> why? Because Santa Claus is coming to town. Because if you were unruly, it was believed that Santa Claus will beat the living daylights out of you, and that was the the picture the picture and the image that was given to Santa Claus at that time. So how then did Santa Claus become this happy picture and figure that we now see them uh, depicting him uh, or, or as? Believe it or not, Ikhwan, it was Coca-Cola. It was Coca-Cola in the early 19th century, uh, in, the, yeah, in the early 1900s. After they had because it was by law they had to remove Coca-Cola originally had cocaine within it. It actually had a small trace of cocaine within it, and that's what gave it the kick. <laughs> they replaced it with caffeine. It wasn't quite the same. And so their sales began to drop. And so they needed a marketing campaign that would bring them back into popularity and cause their sales to soar again. And so their marketing campaign revolved around Santa Claus and St. Nicholas. And so what they did was they did a, a, a series of cartoons depicting Santa Claus and St. Nicholas as a, as a cheerful fellow, as a happy fellow, drinking, you guessed it, Coca-Cola. And that it was Coca-Cola instead of this old, decrepit, yani, horrible man. That used to beat children, he is now a nice guy because he's drinking Coca-Cola. And so instead of the black cloak that he was ordinarily depicted in, they changed his black cloak for, cloak for a Coca-Cola style red coat. And that was where the red garment came in and the happy, cheerful uh, Santa Claus uh, that uh, uh, we see. Similarly, as far as him yeah, and he being upon or having flying horses or what, what have you, uh, or reindeers and, and what, have, what have you, that similarly came from that god uh, that, or that pagan god that uh, was known for giving out gifts that uh, she was depicted as being an individual who used to fly in the sky on horses. And so they incorporated that into the whole image of Santa Claus, changed uh, he is, uh, 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 changed the horses for reindeers and thus Ikhwan we had the birth of, the San of Santa Claus as we know him and that Ikhwan uh, is how Santa Claus and how he was incorporated into uh, the whole of the Christian you know, festivities and the celebration of Christmas uh, and when we analyze Ikhwan when we look really then at some of the origins there is yet much more that could be said when we look at some of the origins, Ikhwan, of how Christianity, how Christmas and the celebration of Christmas came about, then we see, Ikhwan, that its origin revolved around Ikhwan not having a, a robust principle that relates to Bid'ah. If Christians had a robust principle connected to innovations, Related to innovations that would disallow and would be a barrier against any innovative practices being incorporated into their religion, then it is possible 
that their religion would have remained a lot purer than it is today. But because of the fact that they considered, and this is an issue, Ikhwan, that our scholars discussed to this very day, an issue of our methodology, our manhaj, that the wasail da'wa, our scholars mention, that the wasail da'wa at-tawqifiyya, that is, the methods and the means of giving da'wah do not return back, ikhwan, to that which we believe would be beneficial, that which we believe will bring people in. But it returns back to text. Whatever was done by the Prophet wasallam and by the companions, then, ayyuhal ikhwa, that is what is considered da'wah, a means of da'wah. As far as us incorporating that which is not from our deen into the practices of, of or into our giving da'wah, then that ikhwan goes against our methodology and against our manhaj.